Second Chronicles, chapter 7. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, chapter 6, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Now the glory of the, of the Lord filled the house in chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. This is the same fire that came down with Elijah, with the prophets of Baal. This is the same fire that came down with Moses and Aaron when they first lit the brazen altar. That's God's way of saying, I approve. And Christians want that fire to come down. Unsaved people say, I want to see God. Did not Solomon see this fire? Did not Solomon see the glory of the Lord? And will he not go and worship every gods under the sun? Seeing with your eyes is not. It's faith cometh by hearing, not seeing. And I grew up in a generation when I got saved. Oh, let's go see this movie. Let's fight the lost people to see this movie. We got movie night in the church and all that. Your eyes can be deceived. And thus you've got Christian magicians out there doing things in front of your eyes to trick your eyes. That's deceiving. Now, glory to God that he did this for Israel, but Israel doesn't get right by it. It's not in the heart. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. Again, that happened in chapter 5. Something prevented them from going in. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house. So there's something about that glory that was seen. The cloud we spoke about in chapter 5. Yeah, chapter 5, there was a cloud. They bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement. So they're, they're where the temple is. They're where Solomon is built. And it's a stone. The rock foundation and worship and praise the Lord saying for he is good and his mercy endureth forever you'll find that in Psalms 136 verse 1 and mercy endureth forever is 41 times in the Bible his mercy endureth forever 40 is the number of testing I guess 41 would be coming out of testing, I guess. 41 times. Verse 4. Oh, it's going to get good. We're only going to do half this chapter, but it's going to get good. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifice before the Lord. I thought they just offered sacrifices. <laughs> Did not the fire come down and consume the sacrifices? Verse 1. They are sacrificing upon sacrifices upon sacrificing upon sacrifices because they love God. They love what has happened. Love, love that God loves them. They are giving of a willing heart. They want to do. They're, they're, it, there's no grudging. And it's just a joyful time. And King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 22,000 oxen. That's a lot of oxen. And 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. That's a lot of animals. Animal lovers would hate to be in this time. They would be protesting. Save the manatees, save the whales, and then go to hell yourself. The priest waited. So where do you get the idea of a waiter or waitress? There it is. Are they not dealing with meat? Are they not dealing with, with, with uh, grains? And what does a waiter or waitress bring to your table? Should bring meat or should bring grains? The words that we use in a non-Christian nation of America that we are today come straight out of the Bible. On their offices. So everyone had a particular office and they were doing their job. And the Levites also with instruments of music of the Lord, with David the king, had made to praise the Lord. So, again, we read this through Chronicles, read this about the life of David. The music service for the temple was established by David. 
Now, Moses and Aaron, when they traveled around with the ark and, and the tabernacle, they had trumpets. When they came to uh, uh, Jer uh, Jericho, the priest had the trumpets and blew the trumpet. David has gone more than trumpets. He's gone to cymbals. He's gone to psalteries. He's gone to harps. David establishes the worship of music for God. Satan established the music of man, Genesis chapter 4. The first man music that you see in the Bible is of the family of a murderer who brought his own sacrifice. Satan was the choir director in heaven. Because his mercy endureth forever. When David praised by their ministry and the priests sounded trumpets before them and all the Israel stood. So you got trumpets drowning out the music. Moreover, Solomon, hallowed, hallowed, made holy, the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord, that would be somewhere in the area of the brazen labor. For there he offered burnt offerings and the fat, the peace offering, because the brazen altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings and the meat offerings and the fat. There are so many sacrifices going right now. Solomon said we have to have an auxiliary altar. And it doesn't say anything. It, it, sorry to say that he did not ask for God's permission. There was only to be one altar to be offered. But he puts off another place because there's too much. Imagine that. Moses had that problem. Moses comes up to the, to the two men that God gave wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to build. And he's like, Moses, he goes, yeah, we've got too much. Tell the people to stop. we got piles and piles. There's a king coming up to say, oh, they've given so much, we have to put them in, into the rooms, into the areas of the temple. People are giving. That's what your Baptist minister and preacher and pastor wants today. They want the outgoing of the people giving more. But there's no love of God as it is here. The church is going downhill, the Bible says. Verse 8. Also, now this is going to be important, verse 8 through 11. And we'll, we're going to look at many, well not many, but Bible verses. Also, at the same time Solomon kept the feast. The feast. Mark that. Seven days. It's a feast of seven days. And all Israel with him. Everybody in Israel with Solomon keeps a seven day feast. A very great congregation. So this would be one of the feasts that all the males. And they have all the females too because it's a dedication. From the entering of Hamath unto the river of Egypt. And in the eighth day, okay, the eighth day of this feast, they made a solemn assembly. They made a solemn assembly, for they kept the dedication, of the altar, seven days, and the feast seven days. So during this seven days feast, they got the feast that God prescribed. We're going to look at it, and they kept the same seven days of the dedication, of the altar. That's important too, because what was to be on that altar? Was not a sacrifice? We're going somewhere with this. Okay, here we go. Verse 10. On the three and twentieth day of the seventh month, mark that seventh month. So now we got a feast that's seven days in the seventh month. And there's an eighth day. He sent the people away into their tents. So the twenty-third day would be the end of this feast. That gives us a date. He sent them away to their tents. That's something interesting too. Glad and merry in the heart of goodness that the Lord showed unto David, Solomon, and his people. So we got something here going on that it, it, it's you got to study. You have to study to get it right. Studying will get you somewhere. 
Verse 11. Wait a minute, we're finished 10. Mary in the heart for the goodness that the Lord has shown unto David, unto Solomon, and to Israel, his people. Kings. King David, King Solomon. That's important too. Verse 11. Thus Solomon, Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came to Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house. He prosperly Affected. That's the only time that word affected shows up there. So what do we have here? We have a feast that seven days goes into eight days. It is the seventh day. The ending of this feast is the, the 23rd day of that feast. And we have the children of Israel have dedicated the altar to bring all kinds of sacrifices. There's great joy. Kind of interesting because Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23, 34. I'm going to speculate, but I think this would be a good speculation. You can throw it in the garbage can if you want. But I think this is what people are looking for. 2734. Now, just because what they're looking for may not be so. I could be wrong. Leviticus 23:34. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. Now say 15, now count seven. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. There it is. The day that Solomon and the children of Israel are offering sacrifices seven days is the same feast day of the seventh month that seven days is the feast of tabernacles quickie dinky and then come a day short and then come a day long and then it come a month short and then come a month that dedication day and i don't know if solomon set forth his heart got it but anybody knows construction knows contracting you do not finish on the date that you're supposed to finish I took part in building submarines and there'll be a time that the, the dates coming up real quick they would put us on mandatory Saturdays we still did not reach that date it always went over of delivering those submarines but here's the Feast of Tabernacles now let's take Leviticus 12 remember there was an eighth day seven days in the eighth day Notice how we're going to Leviticus 12, 12 being the number of Israel. That's a quinky dinky too. Scripture with scriptures. Now, I am not going to go say far as the chapter and the verse markings are inspired of God, but it comes real close. Check out all the 1611s in your Bible. Check out all the 1313s in your Bible. Check out the 18, you know, 666. So Leviticus 12, let's read this. Let's see what we get. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, Jewish, saying, If a woman have conceived seed, got pregnant, and bore a man child, male, son, then she shall be unclean seven days. Okay. According to the days of her separation for her infirmity, that's the first time that word shows up. She shall be unclean. A woman that gives birth to a child, she's unclean. She's bloody. It's also a sin offering we're going to look at in a moment. And the eighth day, uh-oh, mark that, because we're going to get into that. The eighth day, the flesh of this foreskin shall be circumcised. So there's a seven days for the mother. And then for that male child, there's an eighth day. There were seven days of the tabernacle feast, and then there was an eighth day for Solomon. Interesting. We're going to go on. And she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days, and shall touch no hallow thing, holy thing, nor come into the sanctuary. Now, I'm going to stretch this, and maybe I'm wrong, and maybe it's a sin. But we're not the priests not allowed to go into the most holy place in the holy place did it not say to how uh, that solomon hallowed the middle court 
And I may be stretching that. And come into the sanctuary into the days of her prayer fire and be fulfilled. But she bear a maid child, female, she shall be unclean two weeks, as her separation shall be continue the blood of her prayer fine three score and six days. Okay, here we go, verse six. And when the days of her purifying are fulfilled, for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb. That's interesting. That's important. Of the first year for a burnt offering. That's what Solomon was doing, burnt offering. And a young pigeon and a turtle dove for a sin offering. Now that's important. You bring a lamb because you're a sinner. And a pigeon and a turtle dove. Unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, unto the priest, who shall offer it before the Lord and make an atonement for her, and she shall be cleansed from her issue of blood. This is the law of her that has born a male or a female. Very important, verse 8. Seven is complete, eight is a new beginning. This is all interesting. And she be not able to bring a lamb. She's too poor to bring a lamb. A lamb is too costly. Then she shall bring two turtles, turtle, turtle doves, not turtles, and two young pigeons, the one for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. Get that, mark that. And the priest shall make an atonement for her, and she shall be clean. Notice the sin offering, notice the lamb, notice the birds, notice the seven days, notice the eighth day. And notice Solomon doing the tabernacle. Let's go back to Luke chapter 2, which we've already read. Luke chapter 2. And I said, the world wants to know. What's the world want to know? The birthday of Jesus Christ. And I'm, I'm going to he speculated that the time that Solomon in Israel dedicated that temple that is now built and offered the sacrifices, that would be the day many, many years later that Jesus Christ would have been born. And we're going to look at some more scriptures, two more, well, many scriptures here, then one more big, one more scripture. Luke chapter 2 and... We'll look at verse 5 so we know the context. We're going to skip the middle part about the shepherds. We read about them the other night. Verse 5, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. All right. Go back to, I mean, not now, but go back in your mind, Leviticus 12. Here's a woman pregnant. She's going to have a child. And so it was that they were, so that, it, yeah. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished. That she should be delivered and she brought forth a firstborn son okay now go back not go back in your mind leviticus 12. she has a son and wrapped him in swallowing clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end then they ain't then we get the shepherds and the angels we already read that verse 21 and when eight days were accomplished go back to leviticus 12 in your mind the eighth day that child should be circumcised Go back to Solomon had an eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles. That eighth day that Solomon had would be this, this, this male child being circumcised. This, this male child is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who's going to sit on the throne of King David and King Solomon. Now let's read on. When the eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, God with us, Jehovah with us. Jehovah saved, God saved, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification were, according to the law of Moses, Leviticus 12, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. I saw a couple of holies in Solomon's temple. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the law, the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. You remember what that was for? Sin offering. Mary announced her sin. Mary was not ever sinless. 
We have a time here. We have a feast of seven days. And the eighth day was a Solomon feast by Solomon. We have Jesus Christ that is born. Eight days he is brought for the for his circumcision. Now, let's go over to one more place. Nehemiah 8.15. Let's look at the Feast of Tabernacles. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 15. And if you want ever a sure date in the Bible when Jesus was born, it'd be September, October. Eight fifteen, and we'll start in verse 14. Let's get what it is. And they found written the law which the Lord had commanded by Moses. So this is in the law. That the children of Israel should dwell in booths. In the feast of the seventh month. Oh, we got the seventh month. And that they should publish and proclaim in their city. And in Jerusalem. Saying, go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches. Like the Holy Spirit. Pine branches, myrtle branches, that's the first time myrtle shows up. Palm branches, whatever those are. Branches of thick trees to make booths, as is written. So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves booths, every one upon the roof of their house, and upon the courts in the courts of the house of God, so the temple has just been built. They are building booths all around this temple and in the courtyard of this temple. And on top of their houses. In the streets of the gate, in the streets of the gate of Ephraim. And all the congregation of them that were come, uh, come again out of the captivity made booths and sat under the booth. For since the days of Joshua, the son of Nun, unto the day had not the children of Israel. Oops, made pages done so and there was a very great gladness also day by day from the first day unto the last day he read in the book of the law of god and they kept the feast seven days ready on the eighth day was a solemn assembly according to the manner that's the feast of tabernacle that's where the children of israel will make these other homes would that not be the time when God came and made himself another home of flesh? This feast was seven days, the Feast of Tabernacles. And yet we see an eighth day was set apart. Why? Because eight days, their Messiah is going to be circumcised and he's going to be named. That's when you name the son. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six. No name. Day seven, no name. Day eight, he circumcised. The priests do what they have to do. And okay, what is the name of this child? His name is Jesus. And the priests will have to declare Jehovah saves as they're holding that baby that's just been circumcised. And God told Abraham on the eighth day, the children of your seed must be circumcised. I'm going to tell you something. When they had that solemn eight day ceremony that we're reading about in Nehemiah and we read about in Chronicles they had no idea that would probably probably be also the same day commemorating the circumcision of Jesus Christ and with Le with Leviticus 12 Mary the sinner brought that child like she was supposed to be eight days feast of tabernacle is when Solomon there, here we are in chapter 7. Feast of Tabernacles is when Nehemiah, they come back and they rededicated that temple. That's interesting. And then there's possibility if Jesus Christ was born when he was born on, on the Feast of Tabernacles, there is the tabernacle. God manifested in the flesh. Glory to God in the highest. 